I've been running Kickstarter since 2013 and literally raised millions of dollars on the platform. I'm gonna walk you through exactly what we've learned between 2013 and now, but your Kickstarter can slay too. So Brooke, how's life? It's good, it's a rainy day here in Las Vegas, which apparently we only get like half an inch of rain a year and we've gotten well over an inch today. So exciting Shoot, things are so happening. So everything's flooding and stuff? Actually, yeah, the infrastructure here can't handle it, but <laughs> yeah. pretty exciting. We're, I hope we're you're, paying in there. Is your apartment on the second floor, I hope? I'm currently on the second floor but we do have a bottom floor that uh, is doing okay. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but how are you doing in your sweet office? Doing great, just uh, hanging out. I don't know. I wish time. I had more exciting things to say. We're gonna, I'm gonna go home and have tostadas in a second. So should should be a good time. Delish, well, we'll make it short, yeah. Short and sweet. So Brooke, I know you weren't around, but in 2013 is the first time I launched a Kickstarter project. And it uh, was this Proof Eyewear Kickstarter project. So Proof Eyewear is a company that I worked for for a long time. And I worked there for like five years and it's the creative director and all that crap. So uh, I learned a ton and that's the dude, that's where I learned about Kickstarter and Kickstarter has become my life since, as you know. Crazy. Um, it's funny though, like thinking back, I wish I had a better memory because I wish I could be like, oh, this is exactly when I heard about Kickstarter and this whatever. I literally remember him telling me we needed to do needed to do a video and I was like oh, okay so I like made this video but it literally I know you can't hear the audio right now but it's very very echoey and I literally just put my camera on 1.8 so super depth or super shallow depth of field and just went for it but uh there there I am from uh this was in 2013 so a little lance it's also pretty cool. So the first project I was ever a part of, we raised thirty thousand dollars. So that all of a sudden it clicked in my brain of like, what? This is wild. We can do this kind of money. Like, because back then I was, I mean, what's twenty thirteen? Eight years ago. So I was twenty four. So back then thirty thousand dollars is like what I was making the whole year. You know? Yeah. It's and wild. so I was like, wait, we did that in sixty days? Crazy. <laughs> Obviously you don't pocket that cash, but. Um, the, it's also funny back then, like, look at this title image. <laughs> it's literally it's like... It's not the worst I've ever seen. Well, this logo's cut in half. It's like, wait, what were we thinking? But, right. uh... And then, yeah, that video was... It, I mean, it was fine. And then we put, like, nothing about the actual project. It's just a ton of text. <laughs> but, like, thinking of... Look, jumping over to, like, today's... Here we go. I guess this is from a little bit ago, but literally just like p almost pure images. Very different out to, like take on it, but it also right. anyway. Those images tell such a good story though. That the difference is such a stark contrast. Totally. So that was fun. That, this was like my intro. As you can see, it was like a pretty steady incline. We I I honestly didn't do any of the marketing for this at all. I just did the creative, which I guess apparently I just did the video for this. But that was like my intro. And so a few months later, I was like, man, it would be really cool to get a project going like this. And so kind of how my brain works anyway is I'm like, all right, time to pull the trigger, time to go for it. And uh, so I literally just found, I went on Alibaba, found a sock supplier. And then I just filmed this whole Kickstarter project with the, well, apparently I didn't shower for days. I'm not sure what I was <laughs> thinking here. And then uh, these socks, let's see if it shows. Yeah, so these socks were literally just socks I had in my closet. And I filmed and claimed I could make these socks. Not, I mean, I could make these socks if I wanted, but uh, I was going to I was gonna make these designs. But I just filmed with whatever socks I had. And uh, I made this image, which was really awkward and weird, but That's I thought so it was good funny. enough just to, like, stand out. The whole idea was, like, bamboo socks are really soft, just like a baby's butt. Strange, I know. I was 24 or I something, love it. you know? No, anyway. that's great. That's great. Um, so this was my first, like, okay, I'm going to just qu quickly launch a Kickstarter project. I literally did everything for it in one day and uh, posted it and then didn't tell anyone about it. I didn't tell friends. I literally just launched it and didn't tell anyone. 
and my wow. idea was I was like I want like I want to know what Kickstarter does all on its own without any marketing without me telling anyone how much traffic is driven just from Kickstarter and this was as you can see 2014 I raised thirty one hundred dollars by literally just po spent in one day just posted it and ready to go Obviously for me, I needed $12,000 MOQs back then, minimum order quantities back then were way higher. So in order to bring in these six different designs or whatever I had, which thinking back, I was like, why did I do six designs? I could have done like two, but whatever. Um, I needed $12,000. So I obviously didn't set my goal, but what that told me was, wow, Kickstarter is a really rad place that not only like I can raise money on, but it drives its own traffic just by launching, which was pretty like eye opening at the time. Right. That is wild. And that was eight years ago, you said, right? Yeah, it was twenty fourteen, so that was seven years ago. Wow. Um, June or almost seven years ago. That's crazy. So it's changed a lot in the last seven years from even then. Uh, I think a lot more people have caught on. Now you have socks, board games really innovative camping gear stuff like that it's a huge marketplace that has unlimited possibilities so totally it's pretty crazy yeah literally i mean even just jumping into like the discover page just to go trending it literally is everything from yeah board games there's there's lots of board games right now because i think 2020 caused people to want to play board games a lot more root but, is a really good board game by the way is that, so that's did fun. i just pass it yeah, that's a. I didn't know that was a Kickstarter game. That's awesome. Most games Got are nowadays. Expansions. Yeah, but my yeah. first interaction with Kickstarter was technically with Gravel, um, which if you don't know, that's how Lance and I met. That's the company we both uh, run right now. I work with Lance and Chris. It's a good time. But I had always I love Shark Tank. I'm a sucker for Shark Tank. <laughs> So anytime Mark Cuban would be like, oh, so you're on Indiegogo. Oh, you're on Kickstarter? I'd be like, yeah, I know what those things are too, Mark Cuban. I did it. <laughs> and then I met Lance and Chris, and I was like, oh, that's – I've watched Shark Tank before. I totally know what you're talking about. Totally. Yeah, and it's – I mean, now – the cool part is now we know a bunch about Kickstarter. Um, yeah. There was obviously a few years between that and I, I launched three or four or five more Kickstarter projects in between that for myself, wood watches, hammock stuff, a bunch of random things. And then I started making a bunch of Kickstarter videos for other people. So I made like 60 or 70 or 80 something. I should count sometime, but I literally just made like tons and tons of Kickstarter videos. Um, Crazy. And because I was getting, that was literally my full-time job was just creating Kickstarter videos for other people. Then Chris, uh, the co-founder of Gravel, came up to me, had an idea for a toiletry bag, and I was like, all right, I'm full into Kickstarter right now. If I don't raise $100,000 on Kickstarter, if this project doesn't do $100,000 on Kickstarter, I'm done. I'm over it. And uh, be and I said that because it was all every single one of these Kickstarter projects I launched, my goal was always to break 100 k And I just couldn't freaking do it. It was so frustrating. Because that's really like, like $30,000 is enough to bring in product. But in order to actually like pocket money, like make five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, you need to really break that hundred thousand dollar mark. And right. so up to that point, I literally had only made like one or two thousand dollars off like putting crazy amount of time into these projects. So I was like, it's time to make more money. Like I have to freaking do this Kickstarter. Anyway, so all that being said, then we launched this, uh, the Explorer Slim is what it's called nowadays. Um, which was a toiletry bag Chris and I worked on for a while. And, and as you, you see, actually, you went into a lot more depth on this and gravel in our last video on how Lance and I both uh, kind of stepped into the startup world. So go check that one out too for a little bit more background on Lance, how he got started and how I got started. It's really rad. Totally, 100%. So yeah, so I don't need to dive super deep into this, but the reality is obviously we did $165,000 on this campaign. So between the, what year was this? Uh, last update, September, 2020. So I think that this was, uh, oh, and actually that sock one was before 2014. I was saying last update. So I think it was actually 2013 is when I launched that sock one. Um, but this one was in 2016, I believe. 2017, something yeah, like that. Yeah, it had to there. be 20. 
2016 because I think the plus was 2017 and I joined 2018 when you started sending out the plus. Got it. So 2016 between those like four year, what is that? Three years. Um, I was able to really dive into Kickstarter and raise a bunch more money than, than like even the $30,000, $165,000 was finally like the amount that it was like, okay, Chris, like you can quit your full-time job now. Like, right. come on. It, honestly, looking back, it was not enough money to do that, but we did. And because we did, we were able to, oh, almost lost my pen. Uh, we were able to a year later, really listen to our customers launch the Explorer Plus, which was a larger version of the Slim. And uh, as you see on this project, we raised $680,000, which wow. is just mind blowing. Obviously there's kind of three steps there and I want to dive deeper into those steps and like, what was the biggest difference between those three projects that we saw? Well, and that was just on Kickstarter too. You also put that on Indiegogo. Yeah. So the, yeah, the so, pre, like all of that together, how much was that? The plus was around $1.1 million in pre-sales between Kickstarter wow. and Indiegogo before we yeah. even had product, which is, you know, it yeah. doesn't make any sense. And honestly, there are for sure things we did. There's for sure timing involved. Like, I don't want to say like that you will, if you follow these steps, you will raise that kind of money because we've done other projects where we didn't. But right. this, we've never been under $100,000 for like some of these tips and tricks that we've learned. All right, friends, quick break for an ad. The ad is not for some other company, the ad is for us. We actually built out this course on how to launch Kickstarter projects, how we raise millions of dollars on Kickstarter, um, and also on how to, to build products and develop products. We obviously have been doing that for 10 plus years. We've raised millions of dollars on Kickstarter. If you guys are interested in that, check out the link in the bio. Uh, it's makersacademy.co. And uh, anyway, back to the programming. I wanna kind of dive deeper into these three stages. I think between the socks and the first toiletry bag, there was a couple things. One, obviously learning how to sell product, taking a shower before the video. Like there, if you look at like the imagery, yeah. the amount of imagery I provided, the amount of preparation for that project I had. Um, and then obviously just learning, like the main thing that I learned between those were the point of making the video is to get people to imagine themselves using your product. If you look at my first product, which really I'll link both of these projects and then I'll link both of these projects in the description as well. But uh, the main difference is uh, the video, like the video in the sock project was terrible. Like it's hard to even watch <laughs> yet. It raised $3,000. The video in, in the, for the slim, for the to smaller toiletry bag, all like that one is really easy to watch it really there's really like a problem solution um, that it solves so it's like that in my mind those are the main steps in between those two is really imagery and learning how to sell a product learning how to get them imagining themselves using it and something that i was going to talk about a little bit later but it goes perfect with this you need to understand who your audience is. Why are you making this product? And why does it solve their problem? Also, these videos can show them a problem they don't even realize that they have, but they have it. And the reason why that is amazing all in itself is because they, if they don't know they have this problem and you are the one that is solving it for them, then you don't have competition. They might go and they might look for things that are similar, you're the one that put that in their mind. So you have a leg up and they will like, they'll notice that your brand is the one that's fixing that problem and they'll notice that they have that. So just a fun tip, think of your audience and think of how you can make their lives easier. Like Lance said, you'll, they'll picture themselves in your video. So right now we have the mask with a carrying case. We pick, we made them picture going up to a grocery store and forgetting their mask in the car. There was a guy that, or Lance even showed, I just put my shirt over my face. Make your audience picture that and say, hey, we're here to solve that problem for you. No fear, we got your back. Totally, 100%. And that's really like, in sales in general, that's like, if you can solve, if you can really like perfect that, right. you can sell anything you want. If you can get people to imagine stuff, you can sell anything you want.
and make people realize the problems that they don't know they already have because they're they they are there <laughs> totally that's kind of between step one and two uh between step two and three obviously there was a massive jump <laughs> so the there's really a couple things that we figured out one is we figured out how to kind of game the kickstarter algorithm the couple things well we don't need to dive into what we did because the bummer is it doesn't work anymore so we were able to do some SEO tri tips and tricks and trick the algorithm into helping us to show up better to more people. That honestly helped a ton. That brought in like probably tens of thousands of dollars being able to do that. The other thing is we really figured out PR. So we started, before our first project, we hit up a bunch of PR, but we weren't, we didn't really, we weren't that successful in getting a lot. We, we did get like one article, I think, that brought in like significant money, like 10 or $15,000. But we weren't, it just wasn't that successful. Um, so- Especially we, right now in 2021, I've talked to journalists that I'm friends with, they're tired. They're tired of pitches. They're getting hit right and left. And it's hard to land that, um, that free press. A lot of it is sponsored now, which when you start, you don't really have that in your budget. Don't give up hope because you still can submit your projects to a lot of awesome sites that are free, or you can do commission-based stuff through Kickbooster. Um, totally. But definitely a lot harder now. So what are ways, do you have any tips or tricks that you could give to that people could potentially get some of this press stuff easier? Yeah, well, you just have to really maintain these friendships and these partnerships with people. We have one guy that has moved from press, like opportunity to job to other job. We've kept in contact with him and no matter where he's at, he hooks us up. Chris is awesome at networking. He's just a really nice guy. So you want to be friends with him. Um, being a nice guy, even we offered to door dash him lunch, you know, just something small because that's, if he's bringing in this amount for our project, we can like give up DoorDash or even just a thank you card. I am a sucker for thank you cards. I love seeing a handwritten note. Um, I even saw this cool thing for PR, sending someone a postcard from your home state. And just it's mm -hmm. just cool. Just keep these people, be a human. They're getting so many form emails. When you're sending emails, people can read right through your canned response. I'm guilty of it too, because you just need to get out as many as you can. And that's the reality of it. But be personal. Don't be a robot. They can read, they can see right through it and they're just going to close that email out. They're not even going to respond. And that'll still happen even if you're personal with them, but totally. you might have a better opportunity to make a friend. So just be yeah. friendly. Don't be a robot. Well, and honestly, even the, the don't stalk them, don't full on stalk them, but digitally stock them figure out the type of things that they want figure out how right. like how you can bring them value and get them excited about working with you and become homies like how would you make a new friend you know try and make yeah. a new friend with these people just be homies help them bring them value try and figure out how to bring them value more than just like taking from them and i think yeah. that's the main thing that they're like bummed about is it's like it's a constant take 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 give me get you know right versus it's, it's like, like hey, dating too like you can't come on totally. too strong because that's totally. weird. <laughs> like, you totally. gotta be cool and you gotta be confident and buy them dinner sometimes, you know? Court them. And even even networking before you even launch. So it's it's easy to like, just click that launch button and then like hit everybody up that you can and you're in a rush and you just need to right. shotgun approach. But it's like, oh, I know that I'm gonna be launching this in six months. Let's become homies with them. Let's do things for them before we launch anything. It's kind of the right. jab, 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 right hook, Gary V's, right? It's like bring value, yeah. bring value, bring value. So that when you right hook, it really lands with them. It's easy for them to pull the trigger to help you back. And yeah. they want to, if they like you, it's uh, yeah, Lance is really, really good at networking. So we're definitely going to do another video on something like that. Also, just in general, if you see anything or we say something and you want us to go further in depth on that topic, let us know in the comments because we want to talk about it. We are just making these short, so let us know and we'll make an entire video on something you want to hear about. And uh, we're running low on time so we can quickly get through the rest. Essentially, the, yeah. the third thing that I wanted to cover was running ads. So the main difference between project number two, the small toiletry bag, and project number three, the larger toiletry bag, was we were able to get it 
like get way more eyeballs eyeballs way more eyeballs on the project so like the more people that see your project the more people that will convert obviously when running facebook ads we were running a lot of facebook a lot of instagram ads when doing that like you have to be able to profitably convert those people right but being able to use the topic from before of like learning how to get themselves imagining using the product within your ads is what you need to do right off the bat. Doing that, there's also different marketing companies like uh, Gelop, Green Inbox, Backer Kit is really awesome. So those are, those are the three we typically use. We we started our camp our current campaign with Gelop. It's J E L L O P, and then uh, we're we ran them for a couple weeks, and now we're actually running with Backer Kit now. Hey friends, I just wanted to take a second and ask if you would please subscribe. <laughs> we put a crazy amount of time and effort into these videos just in the hopes that you click that little subscribe button. It helps our channel out a ton. It's free for you. It's a win, win, win. And it allows us to keep making this content for you guys. So if you take a second to do that, it'd be really awesome. Obviously you don't have to, it's not that big of a deal, but I would really love you if you did. So anyway, back to the content. So those are some of the basic tips. Uh, we're really excited to get this podcast and the, like this information going. And we have a name. Uh, the name of this, we're, we're still trying to decide exactly how it fits in or whatever, but uh, business in real life. So business IRL. So pretty pumped on the podcast, uh, pretty pumped on how it's going to be structured and organized. So we will probably make a video maybe on how we named that. I know I said that last time and we didn't make a video on that, but we can always reverse engineer it and it'll be great. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Uh, share this with a friend that you think would be interested and uh, we'll talk to you soon. See ya. Hit us up. We want to hear from you. Oh, my God.